Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Vic, I want to say something about our world. It's okay. okay. Short Can people please? live longer. <laughs> Let us start this hour of worship on this first Sunday of Lent by joining together in our call to worship. It can be found in your hymnal in the back, the number 810. And we're doing the verses 1 and 2 and 14 and 16. 1 and 2 and 14 and 16. Would you please stand? Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because they cleave to me in love, I will deliver them. I will protect them because they know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy them with long life and show them my salvation. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Almighty Mighty God, God your, your blessed, blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. As you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our first scripture this morning is found in Joel, the second chapter, verses 1 and 2 and 12 and 13. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from the earth, nor will be again after them in ages to come. And in 12 and 13, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rid your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 110. Would you please stand and join together in singing, The Mighty Fortress is Our God. Verses 1, 3, and 4.
Sunday morning with you. Worship our, the Lord our God. And uh, I'd like to open it up for prayer requests this morning. Praises and concerns. Well, I've got a concern I'd like to bring up. Okay, Jim. I got this document from a, a lot of these women whose husbands are over there fighting these wars, coming back injured, and they cannot get the help they need to feed their kids. And the VA is dragging its feet on helping them, and I think that is outrageous in this country that we depend on all the veterans of their lives. When they come back, these guys, the kind of wars they're fighting now a little different than what we did. We come back to GI Bill, it's good for me. But it's different. They go, they mix with, they have to meet those coming from Africa. Those guys going in, they don't know who in the heck they're fighting. But the thing that gets me is a lot of these veterans are mother or fathers with children. And these ladies are having to wait 10 months to get the help that they're supposed to be getting. Okay, so we will pray for the VA and for the veterans. Well, pray for these, these women. I, I should have brought that document over here. It showed these ladies for an Easter's coming up and they, are not, they have to go and get, beg for food to feed those kids. All right, we will pray. And it's outrageous. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jim. There's a lot going on in this country with the... We talk about the freedom of our country, but yet we're not really living it up. We've got a lot of skeletons in our closets of things that we've done wrong. Slavery back then. The GI Bill... Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln said, that is good at rest. Brings us all out, you know, those early days. When it said, this country was founded in a unique thing, declaring all men equal. But the very ones that said that went right over there to Africa and got those black slaves and brought them over there and sold them to those people and made slaves out of them, which slavery and all what it was. And yet, we brag about our freedom. I, pray, I believe with my thoughts. I know what I'm talking about. <coughs> I'll sit down and shut up. So. Thank you, Jim. These are very important points and, and uh, very important things to pray about. Um, any others? The flu slash cold is hit. I know Marlene is gone. I see Milton is with us this morning. How are you feeling, Milton? Good. Good. I was just thinking about that as I heard him talking to his sister. <laughs> it's great to have you back, Milton. Thank you for oh, having yeah. Thank you for having the chaplain come see me. Yes. <laughs> he did. Yeah, I was sick, so I could. I, had, I sent the chaplain. It's kind of neat how they can help us in that way. All right. Um, as we begin our time of prayer this morning, 
Uh, we sang about uh, the king, you know, the, the kingdom of God as well, and and, uh, and we read some scriptures about the return of Christ and and different things. But we all um, have favorite ways of understanding or thinking about who God is, and so uh, I want to, in our beginning of our time of prayer, uh, I want us to. Uh, just speak up a descriptive of who God is, uh, one or two words uh, describing who God is in your life and in how you have experienced Him, and then we will continue on in our time of prayer. <coughs> our God is protector. With us in every situation we encounter. Forgiving. Love. Strength. Precious. Savior. Compassionate. Merciful God, you know us all. You know our hearts. You know our concerns. You know uh, our devotion to you better than we even know these things. But this morning we, um, we ask that, um, that you would show yourself to us, continue to reveal, that we may come to know you better, that we may uh, move closer into relationship with you. Lord, we begin this Lenten season this morning, uh, and, uh, and we just... Uh, we think about our own lives and the many ways in which we have fallen short, but in the many ways in which you have been merciful to us. The grace and compassion that you show us is unending. And Lord, we are thankful for the mercy that you show us day after day. Thank you, Lord, for the great price that you paid to make us your children, even the blood of your Son, Jesus. Lord, this morning we, we come to you with, with praises and concerns. We're thankful for the beautiful weather. We ask, Lord, for rain. Um, we thank you that it's not windy today. Lord, we're thankful for our veterans and uh, the way in which they... Um, defend our country, but um, protect people worldwide, and Lord, it's not perfect, it's not a perfect system, but we thank you, Lord, um, that, uh, that these people have laid their lives on the line, just as your son laid his life on the line to, to save us and provide for us. And Lord, in our country, there are issues with with the Veterans Administration more than we know. And Lord, you know the intimate details of these things. And we ask, Lord, that you would work through people of faith in the right positions that could make changes and, and fix problems that prevent uh, these young families from even being able to put food on the table for their kids. Lord, have mercy on our veterans. Lord, we praise you for uh, this 91, 91st birthday for Charles Smith, and we ask, Lord, you, um, you would uh, uh, continue to bless his life, and and certainly, Lord, we we are thankful that they, the family can get together and, and celebrate and enjoy and uh, 
celebrate life and enjoy one another's company. Two Father, uh, we pray for all those who may be ill today, who uh, are suffering from the flu or the or severe colds that has been going around, and we ask, Lord, you would um, you would sweep the the sickness away from those people that they may be able to return to worship us or worship you with us. Father, too, we pray for uh, about concerning this Zika virus and uh, the the problems uh, that it is causing. Um, it is escalating. It appears and. And Lord, uh, whatever the cause, whatever the trouble, uh, I pray that you could uh, help those scientists and, and those involved in trying to stop or eliminate this, the spread of this, that you would uh, provide them with, with your power that their works may be successful. Lord, we don't know the future completely. We have hints and views of it in your scripture and we know that troubles will increase as the time nears for your return. And this is, this is about all we know. And, uh, and yet, Lord, we, we patiently wait, we trust, and we live obediently praying for these troubles that we face and uh, in, in our world. We pray for peace among the nations. We pray, we, we pray for provision for refugees everywhere. But Lord, we, we pray for the, the mission of your church, most especially that the compassion of your love would spread throughout the earth. These things we offer in your name. Amen. Uh, turn in your hymnals to number 156. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
second part of 8 through 13, that can be found on page 160 in the New Testament. This is out of the section entitled, Salvation is for All. The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we do proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Thanks be to God. Will you bow with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I was sent to Concordia, Kansas, uh, to licensing school. And uh, the event was held in a place called Manna House of Prayer, uh, run by some Catholic nuns. I noticed there were many pieces of lovely old furniture in the rooms that we stayed in. In particular, many antique dressers caught my eye. They, ate, they each had a similar design. Usually had four drawers, some of them had five. But uh, there would be two large drawers on the bottom, and then uh, two side-by-side -side smaller drawers on the top, and then, and then uh, it, would, it would have these uh, arms that would come up holding a, a wood-framed mirror up above it. And you may have a piece like this in your home, home or have had one uh, quite some time ago. The, they have uh, been around for a long time. Interesting, no two of them are the same. I once bought one like these at a garage sale. It was really in bad shape. But I could see potential in that piece. The drawer knobs were loose. One of the arms holding uh, the mirror up was broken. A piece had split off one of, the, one of the feet. It was in a drawer as I opened it up. And I noticed that the glue that once held the, the bottom of the drawers in place had given way. The ancient varnish flaked in places, but the unique design of the oak wood was still uh, noticeable, visible. And this piece had potential to not only be beautiful again, but also useful to serve the purpose for which it was originally designed once more. I could imagine what it could be, given the right amount of care. First I had to buy it. Then I had to strip it down, clean it up, and repair it. I needed to expose the impurities that, that lay buried deep inside the grain of the wood. Had to bring it up to the surface so it could be removed then make repairs, finally refinishing and assembly. It was a long process. It was a very messy process. It was hard work, but it was worth it. We all occasionally begin to resemble that old dresser. Life has the ability to tarnish us. We have brokenness, we fall apart. We hide ourselves away in darkness. We weren't meant to be on our own without a master craftsman to keep us in a good state of repair and usefulness. Yet occasionally, we get that way, don't we? We don't have to uh, be a complete mess to need restoration. We all need it regularly. And there is a master, a Lord who is 
more than capable to, abun to do abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. A master who sees us, who notices us. He is able to imagine what we can become. And occasionally we think that we can make it without the master, or at least keep him at arm's distance. We stop thinking of him as Lord, stop responding to him as Lord. We sometimes get into such bad shape that we would use his name in vain. Or worse, his name emerges from our mouths as a curse. For out of the mouth, the heart speaks. All humans wrestle with lordship. All of us long to be free, but freedom outside God's law is chaos. We lose any resemblance to that... that we lose any resemblance that a master has had his hands on us. We don't maybe set out to think this way or behave this way. Our condition deteriorate, de easy for me to say, deteriorates in reaction to the troubles that we suffer throughout life. People begin to say, my God or, or would or won't do this. Uh, my God doesn't do that, or I just can't imagine a God who would allow terrible things to happen to good people, and so on. We create our God in our own image, our own imagination. I can't imagine a God who would. Or I, I believe my God would do this. We create our God in our own image, and we forget that it was originally the other way around. Often the belief system that we create, the road we walk, shows little indication we had a master once. The Creator who loves us, the Lord who poured out His grace upon us. We remove ourselves from His presence. We stop allowing His Word, His design to fashion us. So we end up taking on the characteristics of the world around us. The dust, the dirt, the grime, the abuse. We, even, we have even been known to blame our broken downness on Him. Yet isn't it interesting that no matter how far we wander, we seem to always land in a place where something rules over us. For some of us, it comes in the form of an addiction. Some of us become imprisoned to chemicals, foods, or types of food, foods can rule over us. Chemicals can, we create can destroy us when we consume them. We become consumed by them. We can also become addicted to someone we depend on. Our, a, a person, a a lover, a parent, a child. We become addicted to a lifestyle that starts out as a hobby, a behavior that may be generally not sinful in and of itself. And we could become enslaved even by our own ideologies. But any addiction most definitely rules over us. <coughs> becomes our master, a God we have made, and the dust of them, the dirt of them, the grime, they stack on top of one another. And before long we stop looking like we were made by the hands of our Creator, the work of Master Craftsman. What if there is something in our, someone in our community, even a member of our church, who may not even be able to step foot in this building because she is so beat up or imprisoned or simply devastated by life circumstances that she raises her hands toward heaven and she says in desperation, Jesus, are you even there? <clears throat> Today our scripture reminds us that he is. 
this. The, reason, the season of Lent is an opportunity to come back to the Lord. I found this to be true over many years in my own life. When I feel like God's no longer there, it's not He who left. It was me. So this coming back to the Lord, it's not a long journey, because He's always been right there. Paul the Apostle assures us that the Word of God is never very far away from us. It is a word of faith that is proclaimed every week here. It has been preached since the early days of the church to all people in every nation. It comes from the book that is published in more languages than any other. More copies exist of it than any other book in history, but the word is much more than a book. It is he who came to say. It tells us that there is a master who brought, who bought us, who paid the price with his own blood. It is a word that reminds us how to, to how accessible the grace of God has been and continues to be for us and to us. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is no distinction. Skin color, nationality, language, gender, age, Gentiles or Jews, there is no distinction, Paul says. The word that is dear to all of us is on our lips, and the Master has written it on our hearts. Not only do we all need this Lord and His salvation, we also need His cleansing. We need His restorative power to be applied to our lives. And we must consciously seek, seek and receive His salvation. This salvation is secured here and now, having many positive effects on our spirit, mind, and body. But His salvation is brought to a state of completion in our flesh after this life ends. The Master's voice, His Word, calls us to His salvation. The trouble for some who have believed this Word of salvation is that we think we know exactly what that sounds like. What tenor it is. How the sentences are constructed and what words are used. For example, have you ever heard this? Now with every head bowed and every eye closed, repeat after me. But God speaks to us all in unique ways. Sometimes we fail to remember that this prevenient grace has long been working in our behalf throughout eternity past. Before we are aware of it, leading us to Him, softening our hearts, persuading us to call on Him. How have you called out to God? Sometimes we call on the name of the Lord Jesus with strong, confident voices. And sometimes we cry out to God with sighs that are too deep for words. Confessing faith, getting into the presence of the master craftsman, takes consistency, repetition, practice. It's an ongoing activity that changes as our faith develops and matures through life. It changes when we believe with our heart. We are restored through Christ's righteousness, not by works so that no one can boast. Through his confession that Jesus is Lord, we are restored. Through this confession, others can be restored by the Master as well. The faith that is in our hearts is expressed as we confess with our mouths. Faith is revealed and expressed through our behavior by what we do in his name. How do we confess this faith in a culture that wants us to keep silent about our belief? That's a great question, isn't it? Remember what we learned today. Belief is communicated by the action of calling on the Lord. 
It is both an internal belief and an external work. We share our faith by how we show compassion to everyone around us. We ask God for divine appointments to help us bump into people who are at rock bottom, who have nowhere else to look but up. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is no distinction. An antique piece of furniture, broken and or worn, covered in grime and dust, needs the master craftsman to restore it to the condition that it was originally made to be in. Then it can serve the purpose for which it was intended. Today's scripture calls us to respond to Christ Jesus individually and personally. It also calls us to respond as a community of faith. Imagine yourself, imagine all of us making ourselves available to the Master's restoring work. We need to let Him strip off the patina, the grime, the repair, the wear, and brokenness in our lives. The process can be messy, though. It may take some time, but it will be worth it. The restoration I'm talking about this morning is what the season of Lent is all about. Jesus, our Master, most generous, restoring us to the condition in which we can be useful that in that purpose for which God has created us. Then whoever, said, whoever lays eyes on this community of faith this particular one, will know that we are the work of his hands and may desire his restoration for themselves. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you continue in your time of work. What a great message today. Thank you. Let's prepare ourselves for the offering. And let's join together in the offering prayer, offertory prayer, and sound the bulletin. O oh Lord, our God, you have helped us throughout our lives. It is by your faithfulness and generosity that we receive what we need. Today, we are mindful of those who are refugees, those who need home, those who are looking for work. In gratitude, we celebrate the bounty you have given. Receive this offering as our first fruits to bless others to the nation of this congregation. Amen.
heard that message. That was a good one. Great way to start off in the season. I thought the analogy was great about having a piece of furniture and our Savior is a carpenter. Let him into your life to save us and prepare our way for eternity with God. Announcements. Uh, got a few on here. Uh, Sandy, well, first off, today. Hope everybody remembered it's about the time today. Uh, I didn't forget. <laughs> I had things early. <laughs> so, good for me. <laughs> uh, so, hope you guys have a great day. Hope you have something planned. Um, go out and just enjoy the beautiful weather. Uh, get out of the house and maybe you're going to have spring early. Then tomorrow, Sandy's going to, the office is going to be closed because Sandy's going to be gone. She's sponsoring a kid's trip. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the Lent breakfast. Uh, is it always going to be here? Is the breakfast here? Or to, okay, so with the Lent breakfast, we'll be here at 7 a.m. with different speakers. We have about 10 people show up to the first one. So uh, let's try to, to remember to be here. Uh, I would be, but Kay and I are usually kind of pulling into Hutch about 7 o'clock in the morning, so we can't make that. And then for lunchtime, the ladies are getting together um, at Fellowship Hall having soup and dessert. And uh, Anna's got some trivia she's going to share with everybody. Do you have one, uh, a prelude to it you want to share? I want to speak to our new book when you have time for you and Douglas. Okay, not a problem. And then uh, Wednesday night is go practice at 5.30. Uh, then on Tuesday the next week, the office will be closed again. Sandy just can't get enough of the sponsoring trips. So she's going to be out doing that again, which we need to have that. Nothing wrong with that at all. I also want to bring out, uh, there's a calendar. Okay, put it on side. For February, March, getting things ready that is helping people for transportation outside of Hutch, or outside, excuse me, outside of St. John to be able to get some needed goods since uh, we don't have a Dillons anymore. So look at this schedule. Um, do we need to contact anybody or do they just show up? No, they need to call the WAC office and ask numbers up at the top. 549-6549. Okay. And up in the head. In the word, the WAC will be closed tomorrow, but there is an answering machine. And if they can get to the WIC center, as we call it, the senior center, we can leave them there. If there is someone that has no transportation, we will pick them up. Cool. Just to make sure everybody heard that, the uh, number is on the top of the calendar, up in the heading, so call that ahead of time. And uh, if you do not have transportation to the WIT Center, let them know. They will come pick you up on their way out of town. So this is an excellent thing to, to help out the city in the, during our uh, transitioning time. One more thing, it's free. <laughs> okay, there you go. Can't beat that. Are there other announcements that need to be brought forth, Joe? Yeah, <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. And the church is in process, the three churches, Stafford, St. John, and Andrew, are in the process of doing a church directory. Uh, St. John's uh, photos will be taken on Monday and Tuesday, March the 14th and 15th. Which is spring break. Which right. Is spring break. Right. We did not set the date, so just deal with it. Get your picture taken. Don't. So, and and uh, there's also uh, time at Stafford. They'll have morning time, I think. Anyway, St. John. What I'm asking for is we need some volunteers, some hostesses. Sandy and I will take care of uh, making the reservations and contacting people, but we need someone here from noon to 1.30 on that Monday and Tuesday, and Anna's volunteered to do that. That's to let the camera people set up. Then we need uh, someone from 1.30 to 4, and someone from 4 to 6.30, and someone from 6.30 to 9 in those two days. You can work two days, or if we get enough people, one day, one shift, you can work as little or as much as you want. It'd be nice to have two people each time, each shift. The time would go faster, but I don't know that we have enough people to do that. So. Uh, what do they need to do when they're... Actually, what they need to do is, is just... Uh, 
address the people. Sandy probably, and she's had the training. She knows more about that. representative here Friday. There are two sessions, one at Stafford, March 4th and 5th, which is a Friday, Saturday, and it's from 10 in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon. And we can go there also if spring break doesn't work. Vice versa, some people, that their kids are going to be home spring break, they're thinking about coming here. To do the hostess work, you need to be able to write down their names, legibly and all the family you know like if Tom, Jane, whatever we need all the kids names and let's see a correct address, correct phone number and a correct email if they wish to list it. I think that's it. The first session people will train the next ones. So please be generous with your time. Uh, let, let me know if you can volunteer for either of those days, or both, maybe. Hey, be sure to get those dates down in your calendar. Uh, we've got time to, to work things out, but you're going to have a lot of opportunities to be able to get them. Then the other thing, Joe must be doing a lot better because both hands are recording again. So <laughs> your shoulder is getting down to the recoup, huh? Yeah, good. Motion, 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 is what they say. <laughs> That's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> Any other announcements? I want to talk about this. Okay. First of all, I want to thank Sandy for doing this. <laughs> this UMW book this year, and if you haven't picked yours up, Sandy will be out there to help you find yours that's out there. I'm excited about some of the things we're going to do. It, it, it gets harder and harder, but there are two things that we're going to do that will involve you. And uh, that is on Mother's Day, May the 8th, we have a man coming to speak to us uh, from, he works at Dodge City at Youthville. And as we were playing phone tag, and I finally got in touch with him, uh, I don't think he's ever been west of, east of Dodge City, I don't know, I didn't know where St. John was, but we finally figured that out. And he said, uh, he wanted to know how much time he'd have, and, and I told him, and, and UMW is going to have the service that morning. But anyway, he said there, he was so enthused about talking about Youthville. He said, the two things I like to talk about most are Jesus. He's a former pastor. And the next thing is youth bill. So I think we're going to be blessed to hear this man. And then at Christmas time, we're having a party for the entire church. Uh, and Bill and Rita Clausing are going to... Is this mine or yours? This mine. Bill and Rita Clausing are... Um, going to come and do a Christmas program for us at the Fellowship Hall. We had so much fun with them last year that we wanted to open up and encourage all of our church people to come. And that's in December. We'll be letting you know. Anyway, this coming week at 11.30 is our soup supper, or is our soup, not soup supper, soup lunch, and that will be taken care of. But we encourage you to come and join us as we get started our UMW year. Another great organization of the church and opportunity to fellowship with each other and give support and, and spend time with each other on that and, and plan the way ahead. So it's down in the calendar or just uh, have to plan on it. Looking at uh, birthdays and anniversaries, uh, I see a birthday listed and I don't see any anniversaries. So do we don't, don't want to miss any. But I'm also not going to miss the opportunity to sing to Kenny. So Kenny has a birthday on the 17th. So happy birthday, Kenny. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Do we get a free haircut that day? I think I'll close that day. 
Oh, okay. I thought you were a bit friendly. <laughs> <laughs> they want a free haircut. That's a free cake, right? Yeah, Okay, if there's uh, not any more announcements to be made at this time, again, glad to have everybody here this morning for this hour of worship and a good time of fellowship. Would you please turn into the Faith We Sing book to 2160, and let's stand and join together in our closing hymn of Into My Heart.